Thank you very much, Susan. Um, I'm going to turn this on. All right. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here uh, among many friends and uh, distinguished colleagues and guests, being able to debate issues of uh, obviously extremely high importance and topicality uh, at a time of uh, high political intensity and uncertainty as well. Uh, Ishtan has already mentioned at the beginning that the week is a long time in politics. And it does certainly feel like that from the British perspective. Um, as you know, I, I teach uh, at the British University at Loughborough, and uh, I have to say that when I accepted the invitation to this event, I was convinced that the UK uh, will be definitely out of the EU by now. Not only that has not happened, but uh, there is high probability that uh, the UK will actually be contesting the European elections, uh, much to the dismay of uh, Brexiteers and much to the confusion of a large uh, amount of the British public uh, who have been growing exceedingly wary of, uh, of the whole Brexit saga and, and wish that it would just come to an end one way or another. So it will be very interesting to uh, see how the EP elections will actually uh, play out in the UK and uh, it, it might be very well the first ever elections which is not only ignored by voters, that's something we are kind of used to in, in European elections, but it will be also possibly boycotted by some of the parties and candidates, we'll, we'll see. But today uh, I'm not going to speak either about Brexit or the UK, at least not in my presentation. I'll be wearing my Central European hat and particularly the Czech one um, and I hope I won't hijack the agenda of this panel too much by focusing on, uh, in my presentation, uh, on the uh, relationship between populism, illiberalism, and media and communication, which is my own disciplinary background. There is a growing consensus in the political communication community uh, that the rise of populism in Western democracies is closely interlinked with the rise of <coughs> new media, and particularly social media platforms. We know that uh, populist actors love social media uh, as it helps them to, to get past the traditional uh, news gatekeepers to get their message directly to the voters, their audiences, and to create an illusion of a closer personal connection with, with the public, with the, with the voters supporting the uh, anti-elitist image of populist as, as being allegedly closer to the people. This kind of symbiotic relationship between populism and uh, new media is enabled and enhanced, uh, of course, by the changing news consumption habits. As many, many studies have demonstrated, uh, people are increasingly using social media as sources of political information. According to the uh, annual uh, survey uh, by Reuters Institute in uh, over 30 countries in, in, in the world, uh, there's an increasing uh, share of population that relies on social media in terms of their access to political news. Uh, and actually, Central European, Central and Eastern European countries, on average, uh, display higher rate of accessing social media for political news than their Western European counterparts. Uh, in Czech Republic, for example, it's 56% of people who claim that they get political information news from social media. In Hungary, it's even higher, 65%. Bulgaria, 72 So these are numbers way above the, the European average. And there is certainly a correlation between these high numbers, high share of people who are using social media for news in Central and Eastern Europe, and the general distrust of people to mainstream news media in Central and Eastern Europe. Again, Central Eastern Europeans are at the lower side of the spectrum when it comes to measuring trust to media across, uh, uh, Central, across European Union. Hungarians, as you might know it, are at the very bottom at the moment. Um, it has been proven numerous times that the new information ecosystem is, is conducive to the fast, fast spreading of the kind of information that fits the populist discourses and narratives, and uh, as we know, uh, many of those often include uh, rumors, half-truths, as well as deliberate misinformation and so-called fake news. Um, there is evidence now that ahead of the European uh, Parliament election, 
the activity of populist parties and, and their supporters on social media platforms is actually increasing. According to the recently published report by Alto Data Analytics, there are signs of uh, what they classify as abnormal activity around far-right or fringe groups uh, and parties such as Alternative für Deutschland and uh, the Spain's Vox party generating unusually large amount of content on social media platforms and as the report argues, regardless of how genuine or artificial the content of communication is, its predominance has been helping to amplify the anti-immigration and anti-establishment uh, views and, and, and force them into the mainstream debates. Reports like those obviously uh, support cons concerns which we have been hearing for some time already about the fairness and transparency of the upcoming EP elections not only in the Western Europe, but also in this region as well. Uh, again, we can uh, look at the data from Reuters Institute surveys uh, showing that Central Europeans, Central Eastern Europeans are on average encountering disinformation in the online uh, sphere more often on a, on a more regular basis than Western European uh, internet users, which of course uh, means that um, the elections in this part of Europe might be more and more vulnerable to potential attacks. However, social media platforms are not necessarily the only channels for spreading malicious messages with the intention to potentially disrupt or influence elections. In the Czech Republic, uh, the activists monitoring uh, online disinformation have uh, recently raised uh, or, or discovered um, a steep rise of, of chain emails uh, with uh, various kinds of uh, EU-related hoaxes. Uh, since January, they have uh, counted uh, already 25% more of these chain emails uh, than in the previous year alone, uh, including one that claims that the EU has allegedly prevented the Czech Republic from having an access to the sea. Uh, chain emails are, of course, intended for completely different type of demographics than the uh, social media, uh, namely for older people who are not on social media but use emails. And that's also why chain emails are often referred to as uh, pensioners' Facebook. Uh, and they usually escape the attention of uh, disinformation researchers and fact-checking organizations. Uh, but the effects of these hoaxes, which are spread via chain emails, should not be underestimated. Uh, we have learned that in the Czech uh, presidential elections uh, last year, the incumbent president uh, Zeman was re-elected by largely older and less educated electorate after a very tight race against his liberal opponent Jiří Drahoš, following a campaign that was very much infested with hoaxes and disinformation spread on social media as well as through chain emails. But of course social media platforms are not used uh, just as channels for dissemination of populist rhetorics, but also as efficient mobilization or organizational tools of the populist far right. Uh, I think it's worth reminding ourselves, and, and Ishtvan has already sort of uh, hinted at that in his presentation, that uh, uh, only a dozen years ago, at the dawn of the social media age, many scholars and commentators have foreseen the kind of uh, potential of social media to reinvigorate social, uh, sorry, uh, civil society and political participation, uh, but they have certainly not envisaged that uh, it will be uh, utilized, this potential will be utilized also by such groups that actually aim to disrupt uh, liberal democracy rather than, uh, uh, than uh, defend it. Um, in the Czech Republic, it, uh, just to give you one example, um, there was a controversy last week that when far-right activists, in collaboration with uh, an MP from the governing party, ANO, uh, managed to bring the British extremist and Islamophobe uh, who goes by the name of Tommy Robinson for a seminar at the Czech Parliament. The information about the event was circulated in close Facebook groups and kept away from the public, uh, only discovered uh, coincidentally by, by the media the night before the event. Eventually that led uh, to the cancellation of the seminar. Uh, but the events that are directly related to the EP campaign are of course promoted publicly on social media. At the moment, Czech uh, social media platforms are flooded by adverts uh, for a big rally planned uh, with the involvement of the European far-right, Marie Le Pen, Kate Wilders, which demonstrates again the existence of 
transnational but populist public sphere uh, in, in Europe that is well organized and thrives particularly in the social media environment. However, when talking about the tendencies in political communication that uh, display similarities across Europe, uh, such as the rise of, of uh, uh, disinformation and populist narratives on social media, we also need to bear in mind uh, uh, the differences in populist political communication between Central Europe and Western countries. And one such difference certainly uh, is that the populists in Western Europe are, for the most part, not in the government, at the, at, at the moment yet, and they do not uh, control influential news media, which is why they have to rely on uh, largely alternative information channels and networks. Um, in other words, in the West, legacy news media uh, are still for the most part opponents of the far-right populism, even though we might certainly debate uh, to what extent they are helping such actors uh, by giving them undue <coughs> prominence, increasing their visibility in the public space and normalizing their rhetoric. Uh, in Central Europe, uh, as you know, particularly after the exodus of foreign investors, mass media are nowadays largely controlled by domestic business players, which means that populists uh, often do not have to resort to the sort of guerrilla tactics and, and create their own alternative news ecosystems, even though it also happens, because very often these uh, media owners are linked with the, with the populist actors and uh, they lend their media available to spreading the populist propaganda. Uh, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the situation in the Czech Republic uh, where our Prime Minister is actually not only the leader of the Populist Party, Anna, but also part of probably the country's most influential media, Mogul. Uh, his party, which stands for the action for, of dissatisfied citizens, uh, is, is not really a textbook example of a far-right populist party. As a matter of fact, it illustrates uh, that there are many shades of, of populism and, and Anna represents what is sometimes referred to as technocratic populism. It positions itself towards the uh, political center, but it substitutes the um, very much political ideology for a managerial approach. It claims and pledges to manage the state as a firm, um, as it is obviously uh, stressed by the, by, by the party leader. Uh, however, even if it's nominally kind of devoid of political ideology on the left-right scale, it does not mean that it, is, uh, it presents less of a danger for liberal democracy. Andrei Babish wants to dominate, and he has certainly proven he is ready to take on the institutions of liberal democracy that stand in the way of his plans for political uh, hegemony. And he does take uh, a notice of what's going on around the uh, Czech Republic, especially in, in, in Hungary. He does have a kind of a special relationship with Mr. Orban, and I'm sure that he's looking for examples how to uh, attack certain institutions that uh, are uh, behaving in a way that is inconvenient uh, for him. And here I mean especially and particularly the institution of public service broadcasting. I'm not sure how much time I have more, but... Uh, Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Um, so, without being too detailed, uh, you are all familiar with, uh, with the <coughs> sad fate of public service broadcasting in Hungary, in Poland, where this institution doesn't exist anymore, effectively. It's, it's been turned into a state broadcasting, and in yet another step in a, in, in a mouthpiece of, of government propaganda. In Czech Republic, it's, uh, it's not the, the same situation yet, Czech television enjoys not only a stable position on the market, it's currently the second largest network, uh, but it enjoys a, a high trust of uh, by, by people. It's, it has been continually topping the list of the most trusted news media brands for several consecutive years in the row. And that's also a difference uh, bet between Czech Republic and Hungary and Poland, where the state broadcasters are rather distrusted by the public, as uh, demonstrated by the Reuters Institute survey. Uh, however, of course, the strong and still relatively independent public service uh, television makes it a natural target of populists, including Andrei Babish and the President Zeman. Um, they have been in currently increasing their rhetorical attacks uh, and open hostility towards Czech television and complementing it by an orchestrated attempt 
at uh, capturing the regulatory institutions, broadcasting councils, which have been gradually filled with people whose only qualification seems to be the absolute loyalty to either Babish, Zeman, or uh, the far-right populist uh, party, which is called Direct Democracy Party, very much anti-immigration party, incidentally led by a man of uh, half Japanese origin. Uh, you be the judge of, of that uh, paradox. Uh, and some of the new appointees on these boards, on these councils, have been active contributors to disinformation <coughs> websites uh, and known for spreading hoaxes and fake news on, on social media. Uh, so these are undoubtedly warning signs. Uh, tactic, they can be classified as tactics to slowly suffocate public service broadcasters by muzzling their investigative and, and critical reporting through tighter regulatory oversight. As I said, so far these attempts have been largely unsuccessful uh, with regards to Czech television, but have brought some kind of uh, results in the case of Czech radio, which has been, uh, which has recently sacked some prominent uh, liberal-minded journalists. So, just to conclude, uh, um, I would say that without doubt, uh, the battle for independence of public service broadcasting will be an indicator of the success of or, or failure of uh, illiberal tendencies in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, it's kind of a next step. And uh, while the uh, public service broadcasters have long been associated with the kind of label of watchdogs of democracy, I, I would say it's time to start thinking about them uh, as more of a, a canary in the mine, uh, if I may use this metaphor, uh, a canary whose, whose health uh, is a measure of the health of, of democracy uh, it's, itself and whose uh, uh, poor health might indicate that uh, the time to save democracy uh, uh, it might be getting short. I have some more positive examples as well, but I might as well leave them for discussion to give uh, floor to others. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor.